Tonight on Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte proposes the removal of brokers in the Bureau of Customs to curb corruption within the agency. The Senate will present former inmates and Bucor employees as witnesses at the GCTA law hearing tomorrow. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority expresses readiness to escort ambulances stuck by metro traffic. And President Rodrigo Duterte commends Manila Mayor Iscom Moreno Dumagoso for his efforts to clean up his city. President Duterte proposes to eliminate brokers to address corruption in the Bureau of Customs. Meanwhile, the BOC seizes 53 million pesos worth of shipment declared as fish, fish ball, but actually contain produce, according to authorities. Ayoko Miguel tells us why. Gusto ko, wala nang brokers. Pagka may brokers, may corruption talaga yan. Ngayon, sinasabi ko, sabihin mo sa Pilipino, kung gusto talaga nila walang corruption, tanggalin na natin yan mga ano, gross wala ng examiner sa customs, wala ng brokers. Ang kumpanya ng pada may accreditation lang sila. Sila na mismo ang magtrabaho doon. This is President Rodrigo Duterte's proposal to curb corruption in the BOC. He also urges the Bureau not to transact with companies that meddle with brokers. Perhaps the President believes that the brokers are sort of mediums for corruption. Perhaps the President believes that the, there is no need for us to employ the services of the brokers in able to assess and process these shipments. Customs officials held a meeting for the creation of a new system in which brokers will no longer need to meddle with the importation and exportation of shipments at the port area. We're putting, uh, putting up right now in initiatives along this line ano? and uh, this may lessen and we hope that it will lessen the transaction that is being done specifically that with the brokers. Meanwhile, the BOC sees 53 million pesos worth of smuggled and misdeclared agri-products from China last August 8 at the port of Manila. Based on initial reports, the consignee declared the shipments as fish balls, with total declared duties and taxes of 2.5 million pesos. But when inspected, customs found out the containers had in them carrots, onions, broccoli, and potatoes. The broker and consignee of the shipment will face appropriate charges for violating the misdeclaration, misclassification, and undervaluation in goods declaration of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. President Rodrigo Duterte will not reappoint former Bureau of Corrections Chief Nicanor Faildon to any government post anymore. The chief executive has recently dismissed Faildon for not following his orders on the implementation of the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA. However, despite his decision, President Duterte still believes in Faildon. The president also revealed Faildon has a new job. Uh, categorically, Mr. President, will you assign Mr. Feldon into another position in the government? Hindi siguro. Private. May tubanggap na sa kanya. Private. Uh, corporation. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee will resume tomorrow the hearing on the Good Conduct Time Allowance Law and controversies surrounding it. Grace Kassin details why. Former inmates and several employees of Bureau of Corrections will give their testimonies as new witnesses, according to Senate President Vicente Soto III. The testimonies of four or five new witnesses in the controversial GCTA law will center on the sale of the GCTA and possibly on the hospital pass for sale issue. If I signed uh, seven subpoenas, which includes uh, subpoenas to uh, stack of law, but there were personalities that uh, will be presented tomorrow. The Senate President added that the calls and text messages in the cell phone of Elvira Sanchez, the common law wife of former Kalawan Laguna Mayor Antonio Sanchez, have been retrieved. 
through the help of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. The senators are after knowing who informed Elvira Sanchez about the possible release of his husband. Ang trace nila galing sa loob. It was a, it was a, it was a text from an inmate. As a matter of fact, it's not that di lang take, di lang text eh. Parang hindi accurate yung sinabi ni Mrs. Sanchez. Tawag. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte's 15-day grace period for the surrender of convicts, free due to the GCTA credit is just eight days away from lapsing. Those who fail to surrender will be regarded as fugitives, says the PNP. Philippine National Police Legal Service stand firm that arresting them without a warrant of arrest is legal. Lea Ilagan will tell us why in this exclusive. The release nila is deemed illegal and improper. Doon ito nag-umpisa lahat. Meaning, since yung release mo is uh, improper, then you should go back. It does not uh, presuppose na na-serve mo na yung, fu yung full sentence mo. Hindi mo pa siya nasa-serve. So you must go back and serve it. In a copy of a list exclusively obtained by UNTV, 1,914 convicts had been released through Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA. Of that number, 230 have voluntarily surrendered so far in different police stations nationwide. 35 of them have already been turned over to the Bureau of Corrections. The PNP are targeting the released foreign drug convicts and the four suspects of the Chong Rape Slay case released last August. They are Josman Asnar, James Anthony Uy, Alberto Cano, and Ariel Balansag. The four are accused of simple kidnapping, serious illegal detention, homicide, and rape with a penalty of reclusion perpetua. The PNP Legal Service Director adds it is not about who did the release wrongly but the need to enforce the law. Unang-una yung, yung, uh, nasa pag, yung, yung, yung freedom na you're enjoying now is not supposed to happen. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Camp Kramit. The Department of Justice assures the new GCTA implementing rules and regulations will be based on the government's legal position. But a law expert says the government should prioritize the guidelines for those released convicts who have surrendered. Nel Maribuhok details why. The DOJ and the Department of the Interior and Local Government have not yet released the result of their revision of the implementing rules and regulations of the GCTA law. Recently, some proposed amendments to the IRR have emerged. First, the IRR should have clear definitions of who may benefit from the GCTA. A provision in the revised penal code states that recidivists or convicted criminals who commit offenses several times, habitual delinquents, and escapees are also excluded from the said law. According to Senators Bongo, Richard Gordon, and Panfilo Lacson, persons deprived of liberty or PDLs in the minimum and medium security compounds of the new Bilibid prison should be the first beneficiaries of the expanded GCTA law. The lawmakers believe the true intentions of the said law is for those PDLs who are old and sick and have been in jail for a long time. In connection with this, according to College of Law Dean of the Pamantasa ng Lunsod ng Maydila, Attorney George Irwin Garcia, the government should resolve first the guidelines for those PDLs who have already surrendered. Eh, pero anong guidelines natin? Paano hanggang kailan mo sila ikukulong? Habang buhay mo ulit, mo silang ikukulong? Mm -hmm. ah, Gano'ng kahaba? Ano yung pulisiya? Bibigyan mo sila ng, ng uh, deduction sa pagkakakulong na dahil sila ay sumuko, Sumuko. hindi oh. naman sila fugitive from justice. So, uh -huh. walang guidelines. Kinakailangan may guidelines muna dahil abay, napakahirap nung gano'n. Saan, saan sila dadalhin pati? Sa Bureau mm -hmm. of Corrections muli? Mm -hmm. Sa Munting Lupa? Mm -hmm. Wala tayong guidelines, kuya. Kaya kinakailangan asap na asap na ang DOJ natin Ang DILG ay maglabas ng guidelines panuntunan para pagbabasihan naman para malamang kung mapoprotekta ng karapatan ng mga taong ito. Attorney Garcia said this should be in the jurisdiction of the court as this has legal issues. Mm -hmm. Hanggat walang desisyon ang korte na nagkasabing mali ang computation sa bawat isa, 
Yan ay lahat na regular at tama ang pagpapalaya sa kanila. Masama man mm-hmm. at pa, masakit man sa kalooban na isipin. Pero yung po kasi yung batas natin. Mm-hmm. Batas na sabi na natin pa, sa palagay ng mga nakararami ay medyo mali na naipasa mm-hmm. ng Kongreso na pirmahan ng Presidente mm-hmm. na complicate pa po yan ng maling implementing rules and regulation. Mm-hmm. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Any heinous crimes have made it Many heinous crimes have made it to headlines in newspapers, on radio and TV. There are those that really stand out because of personalities involved in the incidents. Find out what these are as Monoxon reports. Abominable, hideous, evil. These are some of the words synonymous with heinous. According to law, treason, murder, kidnapping and serious illegal detention, rape and importation, distribution, manufacturing and possession of illegal drugs are all considered as heinous crime. Here are some of the heinous crimes that made history in the Philippines. June 26, 1967, actress Maggie De La Riva was abducted in Pasay City. De La Riva was taken to a hotel in Pasay and was gang raped. After the ordeal, De La Riva was left somewhere in EDSA inside a taxi. The suspects were tracked down and sentenced to die in an electric chair. One other suspect died in prison due to drug overdose. June 30, 1991, Estrelita, Carmela, and Jennifer Visconde were killed inside their home in BF Homes, Paranaque City. Carmela was also raped. All three of them were stabbed multiple times. A bit over 19 years later, on December 14, 2010, the suspects in the Visconde massacre were acquitted. The prosecution failed to prove the suspects guilty of the crime. In 1993, Aileen Sarmenta and Alan Gomez were abducted by unknown men. Aileen was raped and Alan was tortured and killed. The suspects were found and known to be men of former Calawan Laguna Mayor Antonio Sanchez. He was sentenced to seven terms of reclusion perpetua or 360 years in prison because of the heinous crime. In 2002, Ruben Ecleo strangled her wife to death in their house in Cebu. He placed the dismembered parts of his wife's body inside a garbage bag and threw them in a ravine in Dalagit, Cebu. Ecleo was found guilty and was sentenced of reclusion perpetua or 30 years in prison. In 2007, Ruby Rose Barameda went missing. She is the sister of beauty queen Rochelle Barameda. Two years later, the body of Ruby Rose was found inside a steel case hidden in a drum full of cement in a sea in Navota City. To date, the case is still open. November 23, 2009, 58 died including members of the media in Maguindanao province. Allegedly, they were massacred by men of the Ampatuans, a known political clan in Mindanao. Four crew members of the UNTV News team were among those buried. Until now, there is no decision on the case. Some of these crimes were made into movies. This have helped awaken the awareness of Filipinos about such abominable deed. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Why News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar, and here are the headlines. President Rodrigo Duterte orders state forces to go on full-scale attack against communist rebels. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority expresses readiness to escort ambulances stuck in traffic in Metro Manila. The Food and Drug Administration monitors possible vape-related illnesses in the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte commends Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso for his efforts to clean up his city. And UNTV Cup donates over 50 million pesos in the past seven seasons of the league. Good evening. 
The Philippine Army 41st Infantry Battalion encountered some 40 Abu Sayyaf group members under Almujer Yada Bentato and Apo Mike in Barangay Langhu, Patiko, Sulu at 11.30 yesterday morning. The uh, heavy firefight lasted for 20 minutes before the enemies retreated. Upon clearing operations, an AK-47 and a dead body were recovered. Soldiers identified the neutralized terrorist as Nan Sawajan, the younger brother of ASG leader Hatib Hajan Sawajan, believed to be responsible for the Holo Cathedral bombings. Two soldiers were injured in the encounter. President Rodrigo Duterte renews his call to police and military to launch an all-out war against communist rebels. The president says he wants to end the decades-old problem of rebellion in the country under his term. April Sinadoza explains why. Walang hintuan. Walang hintuan. Palit-palit yung isang batalyon dyan na walang gabit na wala masyadong kalaban. Ano na? Pagkabon weri na ang mga sundalo, palit na naman. Tuloy-tuloy. At uh, kung mare lumaban sila ng gusto kasi hindi ako magtanggap ng surrender. Gusto ko, kung maaari lang, tapusin ko sa panahon ko. In response to the president's call, the Philippine National Police says they will be firm and decisive to end the local communist armed conflict. The PNP states that police operations against the armed components of the communist terrorist movements will be swift and relentless. The armed forces of the Philippines, meanwhile, is engaging the new People's Army all out. For the military, the very radical change in government behavior that the president meant to say is the more potent, deliberate, and concerted action of all agencies of the government. April Senadoza, UNTV News and Rescue. Camp Krami. The National Meat Inspection Service reminds the public to be meticulous in buying meat and make sure that meat passes through the right process. The NMIS also prohibits backyard slaughtering. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Artusinon, Longanisa, Shomai and other pork products your favorite? According to the National Meat Inspection Service or NMIS, you should be certain that the pork used in those products had been inspected. The NMIS implement the same guidelines on hogs from both commercial and backyard farms. Once the hog is brought to a slaughterhouse, a veterinary health certificate and shipping permit are required. The veterinarian in the slaughterhouse will check if the hog is in good condition before and after slaughtering. The NMIS said, NMIS certificate in meat stalls and seal on meat assured the public that it is safe to eat. Huwag po tayong bibili sa kung saan saan lang kasi doon po yung nagiging problema. So meron pong by visual, makikita po natin yung stalls pa lang dapat dinidisplay niya yung NMIS certificate nila. The NMIS adds that hogs should be brought to municipal slaughterhouses. Hindi po dapat nagkakata ito sa backyard slaughtering. Kasi yan din po kasi ang magiging problema natin doon sa monitoring. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Animal Industry is in need of 46 livestock inspectors. They will be assigned in disease investigation, surveillance, animal checkpoints, quarantine stations, and documentation in different areas. This is part of the agency's measures to avoid the spread of African swine fever in the country. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. Quezon City. President Rodrigo Duterte attacks Senator Grace Paul for seemingly blocking the granting of emergency powers. However, a traffic engineer says that the emergency power is not needed to solve the perennial traffic problem. Joannano reports why. Yesterday, Senator Grace Poe said that she is not convinced to grant the president with emergency powers. Nasa kapangyarihan nila gawin ang dapat nilang ginagawa. Pero hindi nila ginagawa kaya sinasabi nila, eh kasi walang emergency powers. Eh bakit ang Boracay? Wala namang emergency powers na ayos nila kaagad. To this, President Rodrigo Duterte responded, Pero yung EDSA, hinayaan ko talaga. Ang suban lady senator said na, no, no, makurap yan. Hindi pa nga nagkumpisa ng project. 
nagsasalita na ng yung, akala mo yung kaharap niya korap hindi kasi siya hindi oh, sabi ko kay Grace Grace ni lahat ng tao dito sa mundong ito magnanakaw better control your mouth na holier than thou ka For analyst engineer Rene Santiago, the emergency power is not needed to resolve traffic woes. The emergency powers will not bring an instant solution. Like for example, by December you will travel time from Cubao to Makati is 5 minutes. That cannot happen even with emergency powers. So, the public should really brace for a long process of recovery from this. Problem. He adds that there were problems in the past that the government was able to resolve even without emergency powers. The closure and rehabilitation of Boracay and the nationwide clearing operations are just a few of those. If he were to be asked, there are several existing policies that the government should rationalize to lessen traffic congestion. If President Duterte is not granted emergency powers, he said, corruption. <laughs> Kayo. Kaya nga, legacy niya. Make it a legacy. Sa pagkapulitin mo. It's not mine. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. President Rodrigo Duterte in his statement sounds like he does not want emergency powers anymore. His cabinet members have been pushing for it to resolve the severe traffic situation in Metro Manila. But President Duterte stands firm he will not plead to Congress just to grant him emergency powers. He adds that even with emergency powers, with his remaining term, he will not be able to complete all the projects that will resolve the traffic mess in the metro. Ngayon, sabi niyo ng isang senador, doon si isang senador, willing daw na pag-usapan, sabi ko, what for? I cannot complete the project. I cannot clear EDSA with the remaining years of my term. So, pag kinuha ako yan, umalis ako, hindi tapos, may maiwan pa yan. See, I told you, corruption. Tingnan mo, ang ginawa, iniwan pa ng incomplete. When, as a matter of fact, verily, you cannot complete the project within three or three or four years. Sabi ko, huwag na lang. Less accidents have been observed in EDSA as the Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group begins its operations to ease the traffic situation in Metro Manila's busiest road. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Drivers appear to be more disciplined as the PNPHPG assists the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA to man traffic on EDSA. 43 of almost 200 PNP HPG personnel are deployed in EDSA Timog Avenue and Ortigas area, which are crucial areas. Others are distributed in different parts of the Long Avenue. According to PNP HPG, around 20 road incidents happen during rush hours daily, but with the start of HPG operations on Monday, there have been less. Isa lang yata yung reported na uh... Uh, road crash o yung accident ano, na nagkasagian. Ibig sabihin, uh, nagdisiplina yung mga driver. No? During rush hours, the PNP HPG implement the no contact apprehension policy. Hatak lang ng hatak, wala mo nang manghuhuli. Dahil pag nanghuli, siyempre delayed yan, makakaabala, at uh, magkakaroon pa minsan ng, ano dyan, ng altercation. The MMDA admit that although the partnership with the PNP HPG may not totally address the worsening traffic situation on EDSA, MMDA traffic head Bonne Bria says, The partnership doesn't address the volume, but more on the uh, disciplining of motorists. Diba? So kung makakatulong yun, siguro makakita tayo ng 20-20%, diba? so why not? Diba? Okay. Uh, 20% reduction of traffic. Vincent Arboleda UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority expressed readiness to escort emergency vehicles, particularly ambulances, through heavy traffic in Metro Manila. 
This is in response to President Rodrigo Duterte's earlier remark saying he would order the MMDA and the Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group or the PNP-HPG to escort ambulances after patients reportedly die due to traffic jams in Metro Manila. In a statement, the MMDA said emergency vehicles could simply tap motorcycle riding traffic enforcers to escort them in transporting patients to hospitals as soon as possible. It added that its on-ground traffic enforcers can also assist ambulances through traffic, especially on congested roads or when motorists refuse to give way. Meanwhile, Baltic cities test out driverless buses in bid to cut car traffic. Nina Emilio reports why. Cities around the Baltic Sea are testing driverless buses to see whether they can be used in public transport and help to ease traffic congestion in a Europe-wide project. In the Estonian capital, Tallinn, a driverless bus has been ferrying passengers along an 800-meter route between a tram stop and a nearby art gallery for the past week. On Friday, the northern Polish city of Gdansk began its own trial of a driverless bus carrying visitors to the city zoo. The bus operates on the so-called last mile or kilometer, or the gap between where the public transport system ends and a passenger's final destination and could help to reduce the number of cars on the roads. We need less cars in traffic, so we don't like traffic jams, so maybe it can help for that as well. Jakub Einsalu, a project manager at Tallinn's Public Transport Authority, said he could foresee the trial expanding to see six driverless buses on the city streets. This kind of self-driving technology is, is changing this kind of movement, so public transport quite quite uh, massive. So um, for this project, we we get uh, very good knowledge how and what we have to do with this kind of buses coming. And we have uh, some plans to ex extend these kind of projects. Aside from Tallinn and Gdansk, the other cities taking part in the EU-funded Soyua Baltic project are Helsinki Kongsberg in Norway and Veli in Denmark. Latvia's Mgala region will also run its own trial. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And to complete the most significant news for this day, why news continues, here are the top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte admires Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso's efforts to improve the nation's capital. Rosalie Cos explains why. For the first time, President Rodrigo Duterte reveals what he thinks about Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso's work to organize and clean the city of Manila. The President made a statement during the oath-taking ceremony of Malacanang Press Corps officers in the palace last night. Believe ako sa kanya. Kaya nanonood ako kung nagsasalita siya. Mas mahusay siya kaysa akin. Sa totoo lang. Oh, may nakita ako na mas mahusay ang resolve niya kaysa akin. Plus to ako sa kanya. In his fourth State of the Nation address, the President gave a directive to all local chief executives to conduct massive road clearing operations and reclaim public roads. Mayor Isco has been popular among the public nowadays because of his daily work which he shows on social media. Mayor Isco thanks the President for the words of admiration. In a statement, he says President Duterte is one of his inspirations and that the efforts of the city mayors all over the Philippines is because of the kind of leadership the chief executive has. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. A tropical depression spotted off the Visayas has intensified and is expected to enter the Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR within 48 hours according to the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA. In its weather advisory, the tropical depression was last located at 1,495 1, kilometers east of Visayas still outside PAR. It has a maximum sustained winds of 55 kilometers per hour with gustiness of up to 70 kilometers per hour. It is moving towards the direction of east-northeast at 15 kilometers per hour. 
By Thursday morning, the tropical depression is forecasted to be at 1,390 kilometers east of Daet Camarines Norte, 1,150 kilometers east of Apari, Cagayan on Friday morning. Once it enters Par, Pagasa said it will be named Marlin. It is less likely to make landfall in the country. The trough of this weather disturbance and the southwest monsoon or habagat will bring scattered light to moderate rains with at times heavy rains over Mindoro, Romblon, Marinduque, northern Palawan, Visayas and Bicol region. And for the news abroad, here's Stephanie C. reporting live from Hong Kong. Stephanie, good evening. Good evening, William. Eight years after Japan's worst nuclear disaster, the government is not sure what to do with the contaminated water that remains, but its environment minister says dumping it into the ocean might be the only choice. Kathy Maraos explains why. The operator of the ruined Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant will have to dump huge quantities of contaminated water from the site directly into the Pacific Ocean, Japan's environment minister has said, a move that would enrage local fishermen. More than 1 million tons of contaminated water has accumulated at the plant since it was struck by a tsunami in March 2011, triggering a triple meltdown that forced the evacuation of tens of thousands of residents. Tokyo Electric Power has struggled to deal with the buildup of groundwater, which becomes contaminated when it mixes with water used to prevent the three damaged reactor cores from melting. TEPCO has attempted to remove most radionuclides from the excess water, but the technology does not exist to rid the water of tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. Currently, more than 1 million tons of contaminated water is held in almost 1,000 tanks at the Fukushima Daiichi site, but the utility has warned that it will run out of tank space by the summer of 2022. No decision on how to dispose of the water will be made until the government has received a report from a panel of experts. Other options include vaporizing the liquid or storing it on land for an extended period. But Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshihide Suga in a separate press briefing described Harada's comments as his personal opinion. Any decision to dispose of the water into the sea would anger local fishermen who have spent the past eight years rebuilding their industry. South Korea's foreign ministry said in a statement it had asked Japan to take a wise and prudent decision on the issue. One recent study by Hiroshi Miyano, who heads a committee studying the decommissioning of Fukushima Daiichi at the Atomic Energy Society of Japan, said it could take 17 years to discharge the treated water after it has been diluted to reduce radioactive substances to levels that meet the plant's safety standards. Kat Numaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Hurricane Dorian's rampage through the Bahamas last week killed at least 50 people, largely on the hard-hit Great Abaco Island. The United Nations estimates that 76,000 people in Grand Bahama and the Abaco Islands have been left homeless by the hurricane and are in need of help. Beverly Saison tells us why. Here at the Kendall GL Isaacs Gymnasium in New Providence, the Bahamas authorities have set up an evacuation center working to help victims of Hurricane Dorian that ripped through the island, killing at least 50 people, largely on the hard-hit Great Abaco Island. Evacuees, rescue workers and officials widely expect the number to climb higher as more bodies are pulled from the rubble of a demolished neighborhood in Marsh Harbor in Abaco. Dorian pummeled the Bahamas with 320 kilometer per hour winds. It was one of the strongest Caribbean hurricanes on record and stands as the worst disaster in the Bahamian history. As relief efforts got underway slowly, stirring frustrations among locals, several Bahamians said they might attempt to emigrate to the United States rather than face an uncertain rebuilding at home. I mean, it's so bad, you can't even describe that because all the people in those, everything can't go back home, all the homes, all the children can't go to school. Just. I don't know. I mean, God knows, but I don't have nothing. I lose everything. I have three, three children, one girl, two boys. I don't know what I could do. 
Others, including a number of Haitians who reside in the Bahamas, were still stunned by the disaster and did not know what their next move would be. I just spent all my things, my money, my wallet, everything I get, all I'm lose. I ain't got nothing, but I, I'm empty now. It is not clear whether U.S. President Donald Trump's administration, which has sought to severely curtail legal and illegal immigration, will smooth their path, but a growing chorus of Congress members, including Florida Republicans Marco Rubio and Rick Scott, have called for a suspension of visa requirements to help reunite stranded Bahamians with U.S. relatives. Some 70,000 people were in need of food and shelter, the World Food Program estimated. Private forecasters estimated that some $3 billion in insured property was destroyed or damaged in the Caribbean. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced he fired his hardline national security advisor, John Bolton, saying he strongly disagreed with him. But Bolton insisted he had quit and vowed to have his say in due course. He had disagreed with the president on a number of foreign policy challenges from Afghanistan to Iran. The dismissal came as a surprise. Just two hours before his departure was announced, Bolton had been due to host a White House briefing with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. The new acting national security advisor will be Charles Kopperman, who was a deputy to Bolton. Bolton, who had served since April 2018, was Mr. Trump's third national security advisor after Michael Flynn and H.R. McMaster. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced its intention to annex the Jordan Valley, a large swathe of the occupied West Bank, if he wins next week's election closely contested race. But, he, but his plan drew immediate condemnation. Freddy Petalio explains why. Arab foreign ministers condemn a plan by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to annex parts of the occupied West Bank. Ahmed Abul Gate, Secretary General to the Arab League, said on Tuesday Netanyahu's plan will undermine any chances of progress in the Israeli Palestinian peace process. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced his intentions on Tuesday to annex the Jordan Valley a large swath of occupied West Bank if he wins a closely contested election just a week away. Palestinian chief peace negotiator Saeb Erekat called the planned move a war crime under international law governing the occupied territory. Israel captured the West Bank in the 1967 war and Palestinians seek to make the area part of a future state. So Mr. Netanyahu and those who held or aid Mr. Netanyahu in such a vision of annexing Jerusalem, annexing Hebron, annexing the Jordan Valley, the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, and then keeping Palestinians in their small towns and villages as prisoners without any freedom. Uh, Arab League foreign ministers condemned Netanyahu's plan, saying it would undermine any chance of progress toward Israeli-Palestinian peace. Around 65,000 Palestinians and 11,000 Israeli settlers live in the Jordan Valley and Northern Dead Sea area, according to the Israeli human rights group B'Tselem. The main Palestinian city is Jericho, with around 28 villages and small Bedouin communities. Ferdi Petalio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Stephanie C. reporting live from Hong Kong. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, directs all DOH hospitals to report health-related injuries or illnesses possibly linked to the use of e-cigarettes. My Bermudez will tell us why. The country's Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, orders DOH-controlled hospitals nationwide to report any cases of lung disease or illnesses linked to the use of vape. Provide information po sa mga vape-related na, ano na illnesses na maaaring makita po. Because of the latency period nga po, baka po wala pa tayo makita just, just yet. Yung latency period po, pwede po kasing nagbe-vape ka ngayon, pero yung mga magiging sakit po ninyo ay down the line pa. 
The FDA also warns of possible harmful chemicals found in vape. So there are certain uh, certain ingredients, po. For example, like uh, cinnamaldehyde. So cinnamaldehyde is a uh, type a type of aldehyde, no. Pag ano po na inhale siya, ang nangyayari po, it becomes very difficult for our lungs to clear the mucus. So hindi ma iaangat yung mga yung mga particulate matter. So hindi natin mailalabas and it becomes very toxic for our lungs. Si diacetyl is a uh, uh, associated with uh, ano po, uh, the popcorn industry. So, meron po, mataas, pag mataas po ang ambient air levels ng diacetyl, um, hindi na po, uh, ang nangyayari po is that you end up with something called uh, bronchiolitis obliterans or popcorn lung. On Tuesday, the death of a sixth person in the USA with possible links to the use of e-cigarette was reported. It's been well proven by laboratories in the US that the deaths answers whatever it is has got nothing to do with e-cigarettes it's what these people have put in the sea e-cigarettes which contain adulterated contaminants of cannabis my bermuda is a untv news and rescue manila in related news health authorities are urging people to stop using electronic cigarettes and other vaping products while they investigate three more deaths from a mysterious illness that federal officials say may have affected over 450 users of the devices around the u.s abby valdez reports doctors urge americans to stop using electronic cigarettes of any sort until scientists have a better handle on the cause of 450 lung illnesses and at least five deaths related to the use of the products. The American Medical Association, or AMA, also call on doctors to inform patients about the dangers of e-cigarettes, including toxins and carcinogens, and swiftly report any suspected cases of lung illness associated with e-cigarette use to their state or local health department. The recommendation followed an advice from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Friday for people to consider not using e-cigarette products while it investigates the cause of the spate of severe lung illnesses associated with vaping. CDC officials said some laboratories have identified vitamin E acetate in product samples and are investigating that as a possible cause of the illnesses. Public health experts have not found any evidence of infectious diseases and believe the lung illnesses are probably associated with a chemical exposure. But we do know that the flavorants or the aerosols that are produced by these nicotine delivery systems are at least part of the answer. We know that there's something called vaping associated lung injury and that there's many things that cause it. The World Health Organization says e-cigarettes are generally thought to be safer than traditional cigarettes, which kill up to half of all lifetime users, but the long-term health effects of vaping are largely unknown. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has faced mounting pressure to curb a huge spike in teenage use of e-cigarettes, a trend that coincided with the rising popularity of dual e-cigarettes. Adding to the puzzle is a high rate of vaping-related problems among teens. Abby Valdez, UNTV News and Rescue. Apple has unveiled its new iPhone, which features more cameras than before and a processor that has been updated to be faster while consuming less power. Mon Hock Son has the details. Apple made its most ambitious pitch yet for the iPhone as a device for professional photographers and videographers at a launch event in Cupertino on Tuesday, underscoring new camera and editing capabilities. Today, I am thrilled to share with you the newest iPhone. The newly announced iPhone 11 comes in six colors and boasts two cameras and longer battery life. At $699, it is also $50 cheaper than the starting price of the iPhone XR. In addition to the iPhone 11, Apple announced the iPhone 11 Pro, which is being touted as the most advanced and detailed iPhone yet. With a 3-lens Pro camera system, more energy efficiency, and spatial audio sound, it will start at $999. 
rivals including Huawei Technologies Company Limited and Samsung Electronics Company Limited already sell phones with three cameras on the back, while Apple once tested the upper limits of what consumers would pay for a phone. It is now giving ground on prices, even making older models available at significant discounts to the latest technology. Consumers absolutely still care about cameras, and that's why it was a little surprising over the last couple of years that Samsung and Huawei got the jump on Apple. Apple was playing a little bit of catch up. I do think Apple did bring their game, particularly on the video side of the camera, uh, where I do think they will have the leg up. Apple also revealed the Apple Watch Series 5 at Tuesday's event, which will have an always on screen while maintaining up to 18 hours of battery life. The iPad also got an update. The new 7th generation of the product will have a larger screen of 10.2 inches, up from 9.7 inches, and support for the Apple Pencil and Smart Connector, which lets users attach Apple's own keyboards to the device to turn it into a pseudo laptop. The device will retail for $329 and start shipping on September 30. Meanwhile, Apple TV Plus will launch in more than 100 countries on November 1. At $4.99 a month, it will not have commercials and will feature original series. With no historic library of television content of its own, Apple serves as a reseller of other channels like HBO and analysts believe take a cut of sales. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. UNTV Cup remains with a heart for public service, especially to those in need. Help is extended to beneficiaries through the team's determination to win and passion in playing. Bernard Dadis tells us why. From education grants for the very children of fallen heroes, medical aid for hospitalized children with cancer and other chronic illnesses, to help for victims and survivors of calamities. The League of Public Servants has been instrumental in passing good deeds from institutions to institutions. This has been made possible through the participation of various government agencies since day one of the launching of UN TV Cup. Since July 2013, over 10 government agencies have joined the League to win not just for the title, but for their chosen beneficiaries. At UN TV Cup, even the teams who fail to get to the finals are winners. Since the day of its conception in the past seven seasons, through the idea of Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Rason, UN TV Cup has donated over 50 million pesos to various charitable institutions. And this season eight, over 10 million pesos await the 12 participating teams to be donated to their chosen beneficiaries. Papasalamat nga kami sa kanila na lalo na kay Brother Eli na damin sa pamamagitan niya ang dami na tutulungan pati na yung team namin. So nagiging instrument kami na makatulong din sa ibang tao at maraming maraming salamat. Punto por punto, talagang masarap sa pakiramdam as a player tapos naglalaro ka na ganun yung sirkulasyon ng paglalaro namin tsaka pagtulong. The PBA Legends Foundation, another innovative idea of Kuya Daniel, has extended help to former pro bowlers in the country. And according to the primary benefactor, Brother Eli Zoriano of Members Church of God International or MCGI, each good deed is not forgotten by God. Ang sino mang magpainom sa inyo ng isang sarong tubig dahil sa kayo kay Kristo, katotohan ang sinasabi ko sa inyo, hindi mawawala sa anumang paraan ang ganti sa Kanya. Isang sarong tubig lang, wala pong masyadong gastos yun. Pero gagantihin po ng Diyos yun. At ang ganti ng Diyos, tatagos yan hanggang sa ating pamilya, sa ating mga anak, sa ating mga mahal sa buhay. At in totality, maaaring pagpalain ng Diyos ang ating bansa. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this September 11, 2019. On behalf of Alex Balcazar and Angelo Castro III, 
I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Ang gusto ko, wala nang brokers. Pagka may brokers, may corruption talaga yan. If I signed the uh, seven subpoenas, which includes uh, subpoenas uh, to the stakeholders, no? but there are personalities that uh, will be presented tomorrow. Kakala mo yung kaharap niya, korap, hindi kay siya hindi. Sabihin ko kay Grace, Grace, hindi lahat ng tao dito sa mundong ito magnanako. Provide information po sa mga vape-related na, ano na illnesses na maaaring makita po. Because of the latency period nga po, baka po wala na pa tayo makita just, just yet. Yung latency period po, pwede po kasi nagbe-vape ka ngayon, pero yung mga magiging sakit po ninyo ay down the line pa. Mas mahusay siya kaysa akin sa totoo na. May nakita ako na mas mahusay ang resolve niya kaysa akin. Plus to ako sa kanya.